You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another crazy episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Pablo. And my name is Roberto, and I am really curious to know what is going to be crazy, because I enjoy crazy. Paul keeps me on my toes. Anyways, this is episode 718. Glad that you are with us. And uh, I think this is going to be a very um, practical episode today. Information that you can take if you're interested in doing mapping and really make that work well for you. Yeah, what type of computer is really going to work best? Because a lot of you know that some of the specs that are out on the Pix4D site and that are out on the PhotoScan site, they're not really that uh, useful. And with the megapixels of cameras going up and up and up, you've got to have a machine that can keep up with the rate of growth for the technology as well. So today we're going to be talking about what type of computer is going to be good for you in uh, in processing and modeling maps. I think that's really, really important. So anyway, um, thank you again for everyone who's left us a review on iTunes, Apple Podcasts, or Stitcher, or wherever you listen to shows. If you could actually do us a nice little a New Year's gift and share the show with someone, we would greatly appreciate that. Um, and also a big special thank you to our friends at Energen. If you need a portable battery charger for your Mavic, you've got to check out the M10. This is perfect for all of you guys who don't have an inverter or a power outlet and you're out in the field and you need to charge those Mavic batteries. The Energen M10 is quite a powerful little machine. If you use discount code DRONEUM10, you can actually save 20 bucks off a unit. So make sure to check it out, myenergen.com forward slash shop. Also a big special thank you to everyone who's picked up a copy of my book, Living the Drone Life. It is available on Amazon and discusses what it's really like to live the drone life. What do you really need to do to ensure that you maintain the competitive advantage and to actually live the drone life? Escape the emotional cluster F of the corporate world and really get out. It's actually, you know, it sounds weird, but if you live the drone life and you're spending a lot of time outside, you're actually going to have a healthier lifestyle because you're in the sun, getting that vitamin D. Emotionally, you're a lot happier. Mentally, you're being challenged on new fronts. You're staying out of the boredom zone. So stay out of the twilight zone, stay out of the boredom zone, and pick up a copy of my book, livingthedronelife.com. Just go to Amazon or droneyoubook.com. Hey, guys. This is Scott Stoffman from Tyler, Texas, and uh, my company, Quad Access. I had a great time out at the mathing course in New Mexico. And as I'm getting deeper into mapping, you know, I'm learning that processing is one of those things that's really computer intensive and you need to have the right amount of horsepower to get things done, at least in a timely manner. So I'm trying to figure out what kind of setup that I can either build or purchase to make that process faster. And when it, I'm looking at things like buying old servers that have dual Xeon processors, and, you know, 48 gigs of RAM, all that kind of stuff, or bringing back to life something like a 2010 Mac Pro and upgrading the, the processors. You know, so what kind of advice do you have on building something or purchasing something? And, and where do you see that price range going in order to effectively be able to pull this stuff into my business and not just bog down my everyday computer for editing? So I uh, appreciate everything that you'll do with the podcast and with the drone you in general. Really happy as a member. So thanks. Thank you, Scott. Like I said, I think very practical will be the answer to this because we've recently purchased one ourselves. That is true. Right. So we can talk a little bit about what's in that. Although it was, I mean, and we talked to the folks that put it together for us. They built it based on what we thought would be needed. And we and already need thought, a little bit more. What they thought we needed, which ended up being a failure point. I love those guys. They're cool. But we could have gotten a much better machine. Well, I think what they were trying to do is they were trying to match what we, what they thought we needed, probably based on the specs that we gave them from Pix4D, correct? And mm -hmm. keep our cost reasonable. So you can do Define anything. Define reasonable. How much did we pay, Mr. Bean we Counter? We paid $3,500. We're getting towards the end of our podcasting day here. <laughs> you're, seeing, you're starting to see it in Paul. And that's okay. Uh, well, no, I mean, it's a good computer. It's an i7. So, I mean, so let's talk first about, you know, what PIX4D, PIX4D computer requirements. Let's talk for a second about 
you know, what PIX40 says, because a lot of what they say is, okay, you need at least a quad core CPU. For small projects, you need eight gigs of RAM and a 15 gig SSD. For medium sized projects that are 500 images at 14 megapixels, you need 16 gigs of RAM and 30 gigs of SSD free space. So couple things here. They talk about, you know, a GeForce GPU compatible with OpenGL, your hard disk should be an SSD, that you should be running 64-bit of Windows, whether it's Windows 7, 8, or 10. But all of these are based off of 14 megapixel images. And so here's the thing. It says it's very large projects, 2,000 images at 14 megapixels. You need 64 gigs of RAM, 120 gigs of SSD free space. Sounds like their specs are antiquated. I agree 100%. And so the computer that we got, which I'm, you know, I would recommend you guys go even more than this, to be honest with you. Um, The computer that we got was, I believe, an 8-core i7. Um, And we got, let's see, it's a NVIDIA 1080 Ti GPU. We've got 64 gigs of DDR4 RAM, so that's a lot of RAM. Um, And in addition to that, we have two SSDs. We have a PCLE Evo M.2 500 gigabyte SSD. Um, If you're not familiar with what the difference between PCLE and a regular SSD, long story short, imagine if you are filling up your car with gas and you had a four inch pipe to do it versus a two inch wide pipe to do it. The four inch pipe is going to fill it up a lot faster. So PCLE is just a lot faster. It's got a bigger pipe to get more information um, up and down as fast as possible. So I think that's the way to really kind of think about it. Now, that being said, if I were you guys, I like he said, I'm thinking about buying old servers that are Xenon, um, you know, processors. Mm-hmm. I think that's a great idea. Dual processors is, is, is phenomenal. I would not go lower than an i9. We have an i7 and I regret it. So I would recommend an i9 processor or a Xenon processor. Of course, the price is going to go up significantly. It is. Now, and so good point. Where can you buy a custom-built uh, machine that is going to be built for you, that is going to be really awesome? Check out originpc.com. Um, yeah, you can get stuff on Dell, but you're going to be paying a lot more money. So originpc.com. The one thing that I would say is, If you go with a processor like a Threadripper, which is an AMD processor, you're going to want to make sure that all the other components work well with AMD. If you go with an i9 or a Xenon processor, you know, DDR4 uh, RAM is going to work well. A lot of the SSDs are going to work well with it. I mean, most products are going to work well with it. You're in the same kind of family of components. So back to the computer, i9, I would go with 128 gigs of RAM, and I would go with a 1080 Ti NVIDIA GPU. Our GPU is 11, um, the size of it's 11 gigs. Uh, Now there is a higher end GPU. There's the new NVIDIA Titan, which I believe is a 14 gig GPU. I'm not sure that Pix4D is ready to work with that. I'm not sure that Pix4D as a software is made to work with that. So I'm not sure that we're there yet. But a NVIDIA 1080 Ti uh, GPU is so important. Like having a solid GPU is just is critical. Um, i9, 120 gigs of RAM is definitely going to allow you to um, process your maps very, very quickly. To give you an idea, uh, when we're processing, say, 1,400 images at 20 megapixels a piece, for the point cloud or step two processing, it's normally taking us about 16 hours. Hmm. So okay. um, it's not as fast as some of the cloud processing services, but again, we have so much more flexibility with what we can do with our models than what you can do with these um, these cloud processors. So really important to think of. Uh, if he's going with a server rack with dual Xenon processors, he's going to be doing just fine. He could probably be good with just 64 gigs of RAM and the NVIDIA GPU. And have some room to grow as yes. far as with the, the technology that's growing so quickly, obviously. Yeah. Another thing to take into account is if you live in the Northeast, you're going to love buying one of these computers because it's going to help keep your house warm. <laughs> I am not kidding. My office is 10 to 15 degrees warmer than the rest of the building because of that machine that's in there. Um, yeah. I think you guys should actually really get rid of your heater and just put my computer in your office. 
deal. <laughs> <laughs> we could save a little a little money on electricity. True. You could also maybe even use it for mining Bitcoin. Who knows? <laughs> so um, that being said, it's really important to um, just be aware and cognizant of the heat. You're definitely going to want to have it cooled. If you go water cooled, it's definitely going to be better and faster as far as processing. But you're also getting into a significant price increase when you go to water cooled. Mm -hmm. So just something to think about. Um, I think we answered his question now. I feel like I'm just like rattling things off. No, I, I think you're right. And that website that you gave, you can price all these things out and build your computers and figure out what system works for you within the price range that you're able to work within. Because some of the stuff that we're talking about here is going to get pretty pricey. As Paul mentioned, the one that we have cost about 3,500 bucks. It was built custom. And as you've also heard Paul say, he would have done it different. It's kind of one of those learning curve things. And, and that's why we're here is so that you can learn from us and uh, do things different. Yeah, definitely. I think it's, uh, yeah, there's so much that goes into processing and mapping. You know, guys, it would probably be good to make sure that you're ready to get your feet wet. You've got some clients on board to do some regular stuff and go from there. So. And that said, the machine has done a pretty good job, especially relative to what we were trying to do before. Like we were trying to do it on my little computer. Yeah. And didn't work. Well, it worked. And, oh, you know what? We forgot to mention something. He said, should I buy an old Mac? The way that Pix4D uses Mac versus the way that it uses uh, all the hardware on PC is like fundamentally different. So I would also recommend not trying to run maps and processes on Mac. You don't want to try to run it on your laptop. You really need a dedicated machine. I would even recommend going Linux over Windows in all honesty. I think it works much better. Yeah. A lot of people would say that. So, yeah, so with you Rob's going to go to a Linux class here pretty soon, and he's going to let us know how to use it. Can't wait. <laughs> All right, guys, well, that's going to do it for us today. If you have a question, go to askdroneu.com, upload that question, and let us know how we can go even deeper or answer your business questions. That's going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. I'm Rob. This is Ask Drone You. Ask Drone You.